Hey everybody, I'm Molly Ye from Girl Meets Farm and today I'm gonna show you how to make za'atar babka muffins. They are layered and buttery and they just explode with flavor. Fresh babka muffins are the perfect treat for a crisp fall day because they're so warm and cozy. And now I get to share these with you. If you're baking along with me, make sure you have your stand mixer fitted with a dough hook, a cupcake tin that's been greased and dusted with flour, and some milk warming. So let's get started. We're gonna start by making our dough. Grab your warm milk and pour it into the bowl of your stand mixer. And you want your milk to be about 105 or 110 degrees. Now add two teaspoons of sugar. And this helps that yeast get foamy because yeast loves eating sugar. And now sprinkle in your packet of active dry yeast. Or if you're scooping it out of a jar, add two and a quarter teaspoons. This is gonna help the dough rise and get fluffy. You can use your teaspoon to swirl it around and let it sit for a few minutes until it gets foamy on top. So this is my savory take on babka. Babka is typically a sweet treat and it's a yeasted cake that's usually filled with chocolate or cinnamon sugar, but I thought it would be fun to do a savory twist. So we're gonna fill this with za'atar, which is one of my favorite spice blends. It's a Middle Eastern blend of wild thyme sumac, which has a lemony note to it, sesame seeds and salt. We're also gonna add some fresh oregano and white cheddar cheese, which is gonna get melty and hold all the layers together. And then we're gonna add some crushed red pepper for some heat and pine nuts will add nice buttery crunch. Okay, now that your yeast is foamy, add your two eggs. These will make the dough nice and rich. And add three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay, and give that a whisk to beat up the eggs. If you don't have a stand mixer, you could totally do this by hand. Just mix it with a wooden spoon and then you can knead it on your work surface. Next, add a quarter cup of sugar. I love this dough because it has this nice touch of sweetness. And then also three cups of flour. And I'm gonna bring my whole canister over here because I like to have my flour on standby in case I need to dust it while I'm kneading. So I'll start off with three cups and then if it looks like it's getting too sticky, I'll just add a little more. I'm here to show you that making your own homemade yeasted dough is not that difficult. Okay. Put your bowl on your mixer, and then mix away. So start off slow, and then gradually increase the speed. And that's because you don't want the flour flying everywhere. Okay, now once the flour is incorporated, gradually add your softened butter. We're adding five tablespoons, and you could just cut off a pat and toss it in. And if you're making this by hand without a stand mixer, you could just knead it right in with your hands. It's moisturizing. Okay. Now we'll just let this mix and the butter incorporate. And we wanna knead it for seven to 10 minutes until you have a smooth, sticky dough. And if at any point the dough is looking like it's too sticky, like it's clinging too much to the bowl that it's preventing the mixer from kneading it, you can dust it with a little more flour. One thing you guys should really try to avoid is to add too much flour. Adding too much flour will make your dough dry and you definitely don't want that. The best doughs are buttery and moist and soft and good. Okay, you know it's ready when it's smooth and slightly sticky. Let's check on it. Oh, that's so nice to touch. It's still feeling a little bit lumpy, so it needs a couple more minutes kneading. Let me just make sure all this butter gets incorporated. Okay, while this finishes up kneading, I'm gonna grab a clean bowl. You can add a little oil to your bowl. This is gonna be used to let the dough rise. And the oil will prevent the dough from sticking to the bowl. Okay. 
Okay, this still looks great. It's smooth. Oh, it's so nice to touch. Okay, rip it off your dough hook. And now stretch it into a ball. Just tuck the ends under. So you have a taut ball. And now place it face down in your bowl to wiggle it around in the oil and then turn it over so that the dough is completely covered in oil. Now cover up your bowl with either plastic wrap or a towel and stick it in the warmest spot in your kitchen for it to rise. You want it to rise for one to two hours until it's doubled in size. And during that time, I'm just gonna clean up. Okay, how is your dough doing? Has it risen? Let's check. Ah, oh, perfect. Look how gorgeously puffy this dough is. It's risen, it's twice its size. Now I'm gonna show you how to shape the babka muffins. So dust your counter with some flour, and this is just so that the dough doesn't stick. Also grab a rolling pin. And grab your dough. You can lose this bowl. And now roll this dough out into a wide rectangle, 18 inches wide by 12 inches tall. And just gently work it. If it feels too sticky, you can dust with more flour. And this isn't rocket science. Just roll it out and try to get as even of a rectangle as you can. Grab your kitchen roller to make sure that the size is on track. Okay, so let's see. We're almost there, needs to be a little taller. So ultimately, we're gonna sprinkle all of our toppings on top of this dough and then roll it up like a cinnamon roll. Dur -dur -dur -dur. 12 and six, okay. I think we're just about there. I'm gonna straighten out the edges so that they're flat. And I can use my hands to help that along. Cool, okay, now we're ready for the fillings. So grab your olive oil and a pastry brush, and then also your cheddar cheese and fresh oregano. And za'atar, crushed red pepper, and toasted pine nuts. We're using a few of my favorite Middle Eastern flavors here. All right, now drizzle on the olive oil. Just a couple of tablespoons, just enough to get a nice thin layer. And this is gonna help the babka keep those layers. And brush it all around with your pastry brush. And now sprinkle on your shredded cheddar cheese. And this is gonna melt in the oven and get ooey and gooey. Mm, so good. Sprinkle it all over, and really any melty cheese would work here. Let's just dump all this cheese on. More cheese, the better. Spread it out evenly, and at the top, leave a one inch border without any fillings because that'll help you pinch the roll to seal it. Next, add your oregano. Let me show you how to get the oregano leaves off the stem. Hold it at the top, and then run your fingers all along from the top of the stem down to the bottom. Just like that, easy. Get a good grip on it, and then zoop them all off. Scatter these evenly all over. Let's add a few more. And now sprinkle on your za'atar. You can find za'atar at most grocery stores or online or specialty grocery stores. And it's a Middle Eastern spice blend of dried wild thyme, sumac, which has notes of lemon, some sesame seeds, and salt. And I just love it, especially with white cheddar. It's really earthy and just packed with flavor. If you've never tried za'atar before, go and pick some up at your grocery store. It is so good. And it's not only great on breads, it's great on meats, on fish, in salads. It's a great all-purpose spice blend. Okay, now add a little bit of heat with a few pinches of crushed red pepper. And now sprinkle on some toasted pine nuts. 
And these will add great texture, a little bit of crunch throughout the layers of the babka. And they have a great nutty, buttery flavor. And it's always important to toast your pine nuts before using them to bring out their best selves. You can just bake them at 375 for five to 10 minutes, just until they're golden brown. Okay, once all of the toppings are evenly distributed, roll it up like a jelly roll. And make sure the roll is pretty tight to lock all of those fillings in. So you can just start at one end, and then work your way over to the other end. And then just go back and forth. Get a nice tight roll. You want it tight so that it all holds together. Okay, and once you have that, pull it a little closer to you. It'll make it easier to cut. And place it seam side down and give it a few hugs so that the seam can stick and lock in all the fillings. Okay, now we're gonna cut this roll into lots of little skinny rolls so that we can transfer them to our cupcake tin. So grab your cupcake tin. And the way I like to do this in order to get even cuts is to first divide it in half, and then divide each of those halves in half. And now divide each of these parts in half. and now divide each of these parts in thirds. That way, we'll end up with 24 evenly sized rolls because we're gonna add two rolls to each of the 12 cupcake tins. Perfect. Okay, now I'll show you how to shape them and create all those beautiful layers. So take one roll, give it a twist, and just plop it in to the cupcake tin and then do the same thing with the second roll. Give it a twist and plop it in. Doesn't need to be perfect. These are supposed to be rustic. And when these bake up, they're gonna rise and expose all of their gorgeous layers. So again, just take a roll, give it a twist, and smoosh it in. Roll, twist, smush. And it's okay if some of the fillings come out because they're rustic. And when these bake up, the layers are gonna rise and puff up, the cheese is gonna melt, the top is gonna get golden brown, and the house is gonna smell amazing. Mm. I'm getting really excited about these. I feel like these would be a great thing to keep in the freezer on hand for when you need an emergency babka fix. They would probably reheat beautifully either in the microwave or the toaster oven. They'd be a great breakfast or a great side with like a steak or just a delicious snack. Oh, I just thought of the best idea. You can cut them in half and have an egg sandwich on them. Perfect breakfast. Okay, beautiful. Now before these bake, these need to rise for another 30 minutes. So cover them back up with your kitchen towel and set them in that warm place in your kitchen. Hey, look at these beautiful puffy muffins. Okay, before they go in the oven, let's brush with some egg wash. Crack your egg into a small bowl. Add a splash of water. And whip it up. This is gonna make the tops of the muffins glossy. And it's extra important to have that second rise after they've been molded because it'll help the muffins become their puffiest, fluffiest selves. Okay, now grab your pastry brush and brush the tops with egg wash. The colors in these are really nice. There's like the earthy green from the za'atar and the oregano. And there's the creamy cheese color and the crushed red pepper with that bright red. It's a great color palette. Bye. Okay. Finish with a sprinkle of za'atar. Because it looks good. And you get more za'atar flavor. And then a few pinches of flaky salt, which will look like sparkles on top. They'll add saltiness and crunch. 
Okay, now bake these at 375 for 20 to 22 minutes until they're golden brown on top. Oh. I want to eat one of these so badly, it's going to be hard to wait. These look perfect. Yours should look just like these. Nice and plump and the tops are brown. <sighs> look at those gorgeous layers and I'm smelling that melty cheese. Oh, I have to taste one immediately. It's a little hot. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. There is so much flavor in a little muffin. How is that even possible? Okay, I hope you guys love these babka muffins. They're a little more effort than a traditional muffin, but 100% worth it. You guys are gonna be babka bosses.